Okay, so I'm driving in China and I'm headed to pick up some fish. I lost some fish while uh, I was traveling in the USA. As a sideline, I'm driving in China, which in itself is kind of cool, but very, very stressful. So as a reef keeper, we often have these things to uh, watch and, and, and become calm and soothed. It is so much more important to have that here in China than anywhere else in the world. So I'm gonna turn left here. The arrow is green for me to turn left. In China, it doesn't necessarily mean you can turn left. It'll be a green arrow, but the other traffic can come the other way. So that everybody's got green arrows in all directions. It's a completely insane street. Fish shops in China are a little bit different because they, um, they kind of manhandle the fish. <laughs> they hold them, they touch them, they look at them really close. And there's a little bit more fish loss. A lot of these fish are wild caught. A lot of them are caught in Indonesia using a little bit of a sketchy method, cyanide, breaking the coral off. And, and so there's a lot of mortality, a lot of die off. So uh, let's see if we can find something healthy to add to the office aquarium. We've arrived now at the pet market. Uh, it's a pet and plant market in Ningbo, and it's its own interesting uh, subculture, uh, and uh, I look forward to showing it to you. Here's, here's an example of the craziness of China. Not only did this guy park on a 45 degree angle, but he's a parking against traffic. The road traffic is going this way. There are two local fish shops in town. One is here and one, another one is on the other side of town. Uh, this one is actually kind of a friend of mine. And the picture you see behind me of the clownfish, that's uh, one of my old clownfish. His name was Ryan. He, uh, he died a while ago, but uh, his image lives on at Cove Aqua, which is the name of the uh, pet shop. The pet market in Ningbo is not unlike markets all over coastal China. They may not have a Costco or a PetSmart, but this is their way around it. pretty fascinating. But my mission today is with Cove. The shop is named after a brand of Cove products, all which I use. My chemical supplements from KH, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, dried fish food mix, a really nice magnet glass cleaners, salt, and even my protein skimmer is Cove branded. They all work well, and I try to support my local fish shop by buying the brands they carry. Reef keeping is pretty new to China. Most locals have only seen freshwater fish like arowana or koi, or fish waiting to be eaten at the local restaurant. So when they see a reef tank for the first time, their eyes really light up. When you're getting new fish, you have a few things you need to keep a close eye on. Outward appearance is the first one. How are the fins? Can you notice any white spots or rotting or signs of fatigue or fighting? I stay away from aggressive fish because I'm trying to build a cohesive fish community. But if you're keeping single fish, maybe a little aggression is good. Look at the eyes, are they shiny and clear? You also want to watch behavioral problems. Watch the fish for a few minutes. Is it darting around quickly? Does it get along with the other fish in the tank? How does it react to you? If a fish is friendly in the store, it's likely it's going to be friendly when you put it in your tank. The last thing that you want is a skittish fish that never comes out into the open. You also have to look at the breathing pace. If they're hyperventilating, it could be a sign of stress due to travel or something unseen. If you can throw some food in, this is another great sign of health. If it's not eating, there may be a problem. The bottom line is taking some time choosing can save you a massive frustration in the future with regards to parasite spreading or simply losing a fish you grew to care about. Hey, a special for you. One dollar. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I, I ask you.
After I finish my business at Cove, then I drive across town to the second shop to see what they have to offer. Fish shops each have their own personality, and it's fun to compare the fish and corals with the style of the shop owner. I normally take one day a week or every other week to go and visit the fish shops in my neighborhood. It's kind of a fun thing to do. Generally, corals and fish are less expensive than they are in the USA and Europe, but prices are rising as the hobby becomes more prevalent. All right, well, I mean, we didn't get a huge uh, selection of fish uh, that were really healthy, so picked up a couple and now uh, head back to the office and uh, throw them in. Well, as is sometimes the case, I went a little overboard on buying the fish. I bought some for the office, but I also bought some for the house tank. Now, most reef enthusiasts like me, we have more than one, right? I've got the office tank, which is the big dog, and then I've got one of the old tanks that I converted into a house tank. So let's, let's put the fish in. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I acclimate uh, fish uh, in, my, in my home tank here. My house tank is, is unique because what I originally wanted to do with this tank is have an only anemone and clownfish tank. Uh, unfortunately, my uh, Preclula Pre it's hard to pronounce, Preclula clowns kept dying. Um, they would jump out, commit suicide, or just end up floating up in the tank. I wasn't sure what went wrong. So I just avoided that species. It just kind of uh, was the best way to go. Uh, so now what I have is I have two anemones, two clownfish, a powder blue tank, and uh, a ribbon eel, which I call Neil. Uh, Neil took a little while to get acclimated, but eventually I, I found myself able to feed him by hand uh, shrimp, which was great. Now what we have for the house tank is we have a yellow tank and we have a wrasse. Uh, and I'll get you the name of this wrasse later, but uh, it's a juvenile, so it looks kind of like a clownfish, but later on it will turn into a darker, more rainbow-like fish. I don't have the opportunity of having a, a quarantine tank, so instead what I do is I acclimate water temperature and then water salinity by slowly adding uh, tank water to the bag. And then once the temperature and salinity is pretty good, then I go ahead and throw them in the tank. I wait about 10 minutes, wait till the water starts to acclimate. Some people will drip acclimate where they'll put a tube in and drip it out from the main tank. I don't quite go that far, but let me wait 10 minutes and then I'll come back to you and show you how I insert them in the tank. Neil's getting curious about the new tank mates. No, you cannot fit them in your mouth, so don't even try. Maybe I'll feed him a little bit before I put, a, put the other fish in, just so that he has a, a full belly. Neil was looking a little anxious at the new fish, so before I put him in, I'm going to give Neil uh, a little bit of his favorite food, which is fresh shrimp. Uh, not really fresh, it's frozen, but it's not cooked. So normally I just slice off some, some shavings. Make sure that uh, if you're feeding frozen food that you always uh, thaw the food thoroughly because if the fish eats it, it's going to give them brain freeze. I mean, if I eat a Slurpee too fast, I imagine the fish kind of get the same thing. And then as soon as they're ready, you can give them a feel. You can give, uh, give Neil what he's looking for. I'll feed him a couple of those and hopefully that'll satisfy him and keep him in there until the new fish have comforted their way through. We're about at the five minute mark. So I'm gonna add some more tank water to the uh, new fish.
We'll wait five more minutes and then draw. Oh, let me uh, let me feed Neil again till he hides for good. I think he's full, but I think his. Uh, there we go. Come on, come on. Uh, we've waited about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, now it's time to put the fish in. Let me take a net and I position the net on the bag. And this is two ways I can do it. One is I can dump the fish into the bag. The other is the fish stays in the bag, which is okay. And I simply lay the fish down into the tank. When the fish enter the tank, you need to check on its behavior and treatment from the other tank mates. When the yellow tang went in, it was almost immediately obvious that it was getting bullied, so I had to monitor it closely. Even Neil tried to take a bite out of her, and he normally is pretty docile with the larger fish. The other wrasse actually fell out of the bag, into the net, and went right into the tank and got along with everybody just fine. It was not even on the powder blue's radar, and Neil couldn't have given him a second glance. It's really a crapshoot with fish. Um, they're very uh, varied as far as attitude goes. Uh, obviously, the powder blue and the yellow are both tangs, and oftentimes you get similar uh, species and they don't get along. The wrasse is uh, a fairly strong and agile fish. I normally give him a lot of credit, but he is hanging around my eel too much. It needs some time for those fish to understand their surroundings. Um, so. Anyways, I got more fish I got to drop off at the office, so I'm going to have to leave these guys to uh, evolution and nature. Now, I'm lucky because I have two tanks and that yellow tang was not getting along with my powder blue, so I packed her up and I brought her to the big tank. Now, one of the different things is I have one very large tank, well, maybe it's oversized, and then I have the home tank, which is smaller. The larger tank allows more space for things to move around, and it also gives me a very large sump area. So when I acclimate fish to my tank on the big tank, I acclimate them in the last compartment of my sump. And for the office tank, I have a firefish. I have uh, the yellow tang, unfortunately, from the house. I hope that the other fish don't pick on him here. Maybe he's just a runt. You never know with fish. I've had yellow tangs that everybody likes, and then I have yellow tangs that have uh, trouble. I found this beautiful leather that's just really, really pretty. I'm really excited about adding it to the tank. I got this at the first store. A doctor. I call it the doctor. He's the, he's, he's, his life is spent picking the parasites and stuff off of other fish. Uh, all of my fish species checks and everything, behavioral checks, go through the website liveaquaria.net. And uh, actually every single one of my fish I, uh, I check on Live Aquaria. So let's slide them in here. Uh, I do the same as the house, whereas I add the, uh, I add the tank water and then I wait 10 minutes and then I throw them in. So let's speed through this process and then I'll show you when, when they're all ready to go. Okay, so the fish have been sitting for a little while, enough to get temperature and salinity good. I added some of the tank water. Another thing that you can look for is as you're adding water to the bag, you can sometimes see a shimmer. If you see that shimmer, it means the salinity in the bag and the salinity in your tank are too different, which means you need to take a little bit more time adding your tank water to the bag. Uh, when I add it, I can tell that the salinity is almost the same so I'm confident in adding my fish to the tank right now. So I'm going to start with my firefish. Uh, 
And so I am going to take my net. Pour it over until it empties out. She's feisty. And then I'll let her go in the water. Now, there she is, right here. So, I have two uh, firefish in the tank already. So, uh, firefish are typically pretty communal, so she should fall into that group pretty well. Now, let's see about uh, the tang. Uh, I hope that she's okay this time. She's in the front. Now, oh, oh, I could tell that, uh, that Fung has got a uh, smell for her already, but uh, hopefully it's okay. Last but not least is that beautiful uh, green, le oh, not last but least, it's, it's the uh, doctor fish. Now, this fish is different because most of the time when I add the, this fish to my tank, Unlike the fish uh, being angry, they, they they love having this fish in the tank, and they end up getting cleaned off. So I'm gonna leave her in the bag and just slide her in. You can see Fung right now is, is knows it's a doctor fish. He's gonna go over and try and get cleaned off. There's a lot happening in there. Everybody's excited. So finally, we have this beautiful leather. I'm gonna start it out on the ground right here. So I'm gonna take my bench. Hey guys, this is, this is really cool. This is a, a little bench with a fold out step. It has been just a godsend for my tank. It allows me to just step right up and get over to the top, which is where I wanna be. Now I'm gonna take the leather and just drop it into my hand. It's actually not a leather. I'm gonna have to check out and see what it is. So I'll start off with it right here. Now, I have crabs in that tank that will move that around like it's furniture. So I'm gonna have to make sure that I glue it in place. The, uh, the other thing that you gotta consider when you're putting corals into your tank is uh, lighting. Uh, my tank here has different zones for different lighting. Uh, the area it's at right now is high light. Uh, as you go lower, there are less, uh, less penetrating light, so you have like some, some different sort of uh, succulent style uh, uh, corals that survive well there, and then the SPS survives up higher, closer to the light. Also, I have a uh, alternating pump system, the uh, wave maker, um, and it has high flow and low flow areas. You can see these uh, pa fire polyps are grown in the uh, low flow area, and the SPS corals are in the direct line fire of some of the high uh, flow. So I'm gonna have to look up the behavior of that, uh, that coral I just put in and make sure that I put it in an area where it's gonna grow the best way it can grow. So uh, that, that's been enough for me uh, putting the new fish in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the information I had for you here. And uh, look for me again as I talk about different techniques that I use on this tank. And uh, Jayo. Reef Roll Call. Today's Reef Roll Call is one of my favorite passed on tank mates. Actually, he was in my tank back when I had the other office. He's a blue leg hermit crab named Oscar. Oscar was full of personality and he was unique because he enjoyed living off the ground entwined in the branches of a bird's nest coral I had in the tank at the time. Even if I plucked him from the branches, he'd always make his way back to his favorite perch. Oscar never bothered any of the other fish, corals or invertebrates, 
and I would recommend this type of crab to any reef keeper. He passed on about a year ago when he let his adventure get the better of him and crawled out of the tank completely. A real loss. This has been Matt. May your pH never waver and your nitrates never rise. <laughs>